What's up, freaks? Welcome back to Marty's Bent. This week, we're going to be answering the question, is Bitcoin at risk of a quantum attack? Does it make sense to continue using Bitcoin if quantum computers are going to manifest and be a thing, a reality that we have to live with? Short answer is yes, it is a risk. Um, But it's not only a risk for Bitcoin, it's a risk for any system that depends on cryptography for security. I think the, the, the bigger question, the more pertinent question that people are wondering is, can Bitcoin avoid this risk? Can it incorporate quantum resistant signature schemes so that when, if and when quantum computers do hit the market, that people will be able to have peace of mind and certainty that their Bitcoin is not going to be stolen by somebody using a quantum computer to crack their private key and, and move their Bitcoin. And if you've been following the headlines and a lot of the fear mongering that has been accelerating throughout the year, many people are trying to make you believe that no, Bitcoin is not moving fast enough to do this. And I just wanted to make this video to push back on that notion uh, because I think it's pretty clear if you've been following Bitcoin uh, development discussions over the last year, the the quantum risk is certainly being taken seriously uh, and the conversations have started. And it's really important to recognize that Bitcoin is a globally distributed peer-to-peer system that depends on consensus protocol rules, consensus via protocol rules uh, that are very hard to change and you really don't want to change them too often. And so while many pundits out there may not see these discussions and may not think that there's enough discussion about making Bitcoin quantum resistant, nothing could be further from the truth. I've read the mailing list, there was a big discussion early in April uh, about different quantum schemes that that we could incorporate, quantum resistance schemes that we could incorporate into Bitcoin. Uh, And the conversations are happening. And just this week, uh, not getting as much shine as I think it should, which is why I'm making this video. Um, Jonas Nick and Mikhail, uh, excuse me, Mikhail Kudinov from Blockstream Research uh, released a white paper called Hash Base Signature Schemes for Bitcoin uh, <laughs> that basically walks through the different options that we have uh, to incorporate quantum resistant signatures into Bitcoin. Um, and so Here's a tweet from earlier this week, uh, December 9th, so a few days ago. Uh, Jonas Nick took to X to say, we just published hash-based signatures for Bitcoin, a new analysis of post-quantum schemes uh, by Mikhail Kudinov and myself at Blockstream Research. Uh, this paper serves as a gentle intro to hash-based schemes and explores how to optimize them specifically for application in Bitcoin. It goes on to say hash-based signatures are conceptually simple and rely solely on hash functions, which is primitive which is a primitive Bitcoin already trust, while NIST has standardized SLHDSA or Sphinx Plus. We investigate alternatives that are better suited to Bitcoin specific needs. We'll get into this in a while. We explore in detail how various optimizations, parameters, choices affect size and performance. Signature size uh, can be reduced to around three to four kilobytes, which is comparable to latest base signature schemes, MLDSA. This may all seem like Chinese or hieroglyphics to you. I will try to do my best. I'm not a hardcore cryptographer, but I think I know enough to be dangerous to sort of explain what Jonas is trying to say here. Uh, the report also discusses broader considerations, trade-offs between stateless and stateful schemes, compatibility with uh, HD wallets, those hierarchical, hierarchical deterministic wallets, uh, limitations of current approaches from multi and threshold signatures, uh, and security targets. So I think this this tweet right here is a great sort of microcosm of why I think the pundits and uh, everybody basically saying the dev, devs aren't thinking about quantum resistance, they're not taking seriously. I, I think they, number one, are wrong, and number two, really don't understand uh, the nuance and thoroughness which is necessary to even begin to approach this conversation. So we can see here you have trade-offs between stateless and stateful schemes, uh, compatibility, with HD wallets, limitations of current approaches for multi-sig and threshold signatures and security targets. And so when trying to think of like, okay, how are we going to change the signature scheme for Bitcoin to make it quantum resistant? You have to understand that Bitcoin has been uh, 
operational since January 3rd, 2009, approaching 17 years. There are a number of addresses that have already been created, uh, single SIG addresses, multi SIG addresses, uh, wallets that have threshold signature schemes, um, HD wallets with different derivation paths and all this. There's a number of different variables to take into consideration. And uh, like I said, Bitcoin developers have been taking this into consideration and thinking long and hard about it, as is evident by uh, the research paper that Jonas, Nick, and Mikhail put out earlier this week. And just highlighting the paper here, highly recommend you go read this. It, again, we'll, most of it may seem like hieroglyphics to you, but they go through all of the different potential paths that we can go down to make Bitcoin quantum resistant. Um, and one thing to consider is when you're, when you're thinking about all this is um, the trade-offs that you make when you bring on a quantum resistant signature scheme into Bitcoin is, is database. Like how, how long does it take to actually uh, not only create these signatures, but verify these signatures once they're in use. And that's been one of the biggest sort of hurdles and problems when approaching this problem in Bitcoin is, yes, there are many different uh, quantum resistant signature schemes that can be implemented in Bitcoin. However, they come with trade-offs, particularly verification and bandwidth trade-offs when you're putting Bitcoin in wallets created with a quantum resistant private public key pair. Uh, and then other full nodes have to verify that many quantum schemes are very data intensive, so it could slow down uh, block propagation and the ability uh, to download a full node. And so we have to sort of weigh these trade-offs and try to find signature schemes that, that make it so you can do this with as little data as possible. And that is exactly what Jonas and Mikhail have been exploring and wrote their researching and uh, wrote their white paper on earlier this week. And so they feel pretty confident that they've um, done the research to find uh, signature schemes that would have a nice trade-off balance. It would get us quantum resistance. So if quantum computers ever do manifest, um, your Bitcoin will be secure in your private keys. And at the same time, uh, it will uh, be conducive for, it, it would enable people to actually download full nodes and verify transactions and addresses without needing a significant amount of bandwidth and data storage. And so Bitcoin developers are thinking about it. Uh, research paper just came out this week. Uh, am I worried? about Bitcoin falling prey to a quantum attack. It's not anywhere near the top of my list. Maybe I'm naive, maybe I'm foolish, but I, I think there is a ton of fear-mongering out there uh, by pundits and uh, people with ulterior mo motives, particularly to push you towards um, something that they're, they're selling you, some quantum-resistant thing on the other side of that. Um, and, I, and I honestly don't think many people are really understanding the types of conversations that have been going on around quantum resistance within the Bitcoin development community uh, and the fact that there are a number of hardcore cryptographers within Bitcoin who are taking this very seriously. And I want to give a shout out to Jonas Mikhail from Blockstream for taking the time to research this subject and to release their their paper um, earlier this week. And this is by no means like, hey, we solved the problem, but it, we are taking this problem seriously, doing research and beginning to figure out ways in which we could solve the quantum resistance, uh, the quantum risks that, that may or may not manifest uh, uh, in the medium to long term. I think that's the big question right now is, okay, there has been objectively progression in the world of quantum computing. Uh, I think the big question is, is how, how quickly are quantum computers going to get to the point where they're um, reliable, uh, scalable, and able to actually attack uh, cryptographic infrastructure that exists out there. Um, one other thing to note, uh, if quantum computers do come, Bitcoin is not the only thing. I think this whole conversation is funny because people immediately go to Bitcoin. It makes sense because your Bitcoin is secured by a private key and it's got a private public key pair. It's very um, sort of front and center of what Bitcoin does and what it is. And so it makes sense that Bitcoin would be picked on, but I think everything that you touch, uh, that almost everything that you touch on the internet uh, is depending on some cryptographic signature scheme at some point, some cryptographic security, SSL, uh, HTTPS, your banking infrastructure, all these things 
use cryptography to secure their systems and by extension are at risk to a quantum attack as well. Um, so quantum seems like there's progress in that area. Is Bitcoin uh, in an existential crisis because of the progress that's being made in quantum computing? I don't think so. Very smart developers, cryptographers, more importantly, are researching the problem. They're basically laying the groundwork for like, okay, we need, we're thinking about this problem. There needs to be a quantum resistant signature scheme solution that is ultimately implemented into Bitcoin. Um, and we just saw Jonas and Mikhail release a, a report, a research report that says, okay, we did a research. If we're trying to weigh the trade-off balance of quantum resistant address structures and the sort of data that comes along with verifying those address structures, we, we think we found uh, a solution that will make sure we can be quantum resistant and will also make sure Bitcoin remains uh, distributed, decentralized, and um, sort of operational or uh, you're, you're able to actually use it with a good user experience, uh, good liveliness, um, if you will. So yeah, I want to take some time to discuss this. I'm not as worried about it. People are working on solutions. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not that people should not be worried at all. You should be. And I think, uh, again, like I said earlier, I think the big problem with the quantum conversation as it stands today, it's a lot of fear-mongering um, and the sky is falling conversation, acting like nobody is doing anything. But if you know where to look, it's pretty clear that there are, there are very smart people doing things to prepare for this. So it's worth to take a little bit of time to discuss this. And uh, yeah, we'll link to uh, Jonas's tweet and the white paper in the show notes. So if you want to read more about it, if you're into cryptography, uh, go for it. Enjoy your day. Okay.